Hello viewers, welcome to Axio Hour, an happy internet day. While October draws near to a close, we hope that you are gearing up for November. The International Internet Day has been famously celebrated annually on October 29th to commemorate a momentous day in the history of telecommunications and technology. The internet has played a significant role in not only connecting millions of users around the globe, but also easing access to information and much more. Since being introduced to the internet in 1995 with the launch of the first ever ISP, Uganda has made progressive strides in our journey through four industrial revolutions. We interacted with a couple of experts in the internet community and picked their minds on what they think is the future of Uganda's internet moving forward as well as the importance of the internet in our day-to-day -day lives. They included Dennis Okiror, Key Accounts Manager, Siakom, Agri Mugisha, CEO, YoTV. Digamba Mehra, Head Technologies and Network Operations, Uganda and Rwanda, Bandwidth and Cloud Services Group. Dennis Sokirori is my name. I'm a key account manager at SICOM Uganda. I've been uh, in SICOM uh, since uh, 2019 and we are moving very fast. Agram Gesha, the CEO of the UTV channels, uh, an IPTV uh, solution where Tech Farm, we own a product called UTV channels. It's an IPTV solution, uh, the first IPTV uh, application in Uganda. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's where I come from. My name is Digambar, Digambar Mehra, the full name. I work for Bandwidth and Cloud Services Group. I'm the head of technology and operations for Bandwidth and Cloud Services Group for Uganda and Rwanda operations, actually. So uh, Bandwidth and Cloud Group is a company which provides IP transit lease lines and we also built a lot of fiber uh, in east africa central africa and west africa so in uganda uh, alone we have like 5000 kilometer of fiber we partnership with uh, almost all the isp providers and the operators which are operating in uganda uh, including airtel mtn rock uh, Lyca mobile and the other I think the internet has uh, helped our economy in different ways, especially in terms of communication, yeah, productivity, and, uh, and being able to transform people's lives. So if you look at it from communication, from the communication aspect, uh, people are able to send information back and forth, companies are able to work because we have internet that is now affordable, and then people are able to get the requirements to order uh, things online, they're able to uh, do work, basically. They're able to be productive, and uh, that is good for, for operations. Then also, when it comes to lifestyle, internet is changing how people are living. If you look at social media, uh, look at uh, TV content that is now available off the internet, YouTube, there's a lot of information uh, or entertainment that is uh, provided for through the internet. Yeah, my opinion in what the internet has done for the economy, it, we, we live in a, a, a digital era, so um, everybody is streaming something, everybody is uh, doing something on the internet. Uh, people, uh, the pandemic uh, brought in a paradigm shift and, and, and everything literally went on the internet, education and shopping, everything is on the internet, so for me I think that the internet has uh, revolutionized everything. Um, everything is about the internet in our in our generation. So uh, the internet has uh, set us up on a, a new uh, a new road, and that we are walking um, as, as a generation. Yeah. Uh, my opinion uh, regarding what the internet has done to the economy, I think it's uh, it has a vast vast impact on the economy. Uh, uh, let me take you back, like 10 years back, if you think about internet, you would have said that this thing is not going to work for anyone in this world and this thing is like it's going to vanish after maybe a decade or something. But this internet is there and obviously it's going to be remain there. Uh, regarding the economy, it has a very, very vast impact. People are getting jobs. And that's the, I think that's the, that's the best thing, people are getting jobs. And the second thing is, it is increasing the economy. It is increasing the economy. How? Because it is connecting you to the outer world. You can buy goods from, you know, how, how easy it is to buy a good from China right now or India right now or 
maybe let's say south africa right now it's very easy to buy something on the internet you just order and maybe it is here in uganda for in 15 days or there are so many uh, application which are running in in play stores right now where you can give your orders and you can immediately get your orders uh, let's say for example zoomia Jumia is a very good example of a success, it's a success story actually. So those, that is the impact it's putting on the economy. Economy is growing day by day. Um, uh, if I go like five years or six years back, the internet traffic was very less in Uganda actually at that time. And you won't believe the traffic has grown like anything. Anything. Uh, we have uh, Google caches, we have Facebook caches, uh, caches means uh, Google and Facebook they have their own servers installed in Uganda so the like the, the things you are doing repetitive things you are doing on internet they are already here you don't need to go to the to London exchange or the other European exchange they are already available in Uganda and that is the impact of the you know you can you can imagine the growth that Facebook Google those companies are investing in Uganda they are really investing and everybody is investing. I was just reading an article in Facebook uh, long back that somebody started his business only on due to this internet. Doing nothing, just publishing on Facebook. People are just publishing on Facebook or the other uh, social media platform and they are getting businesses. So I think it's really, really... Even, even in terms of media, you can see it's very easy. Every media platform is right now available on social media also. It's easy to reach out the people. And it's quick. You don't need to wait for 9 p.m., 8 p.m. news broadcast or something. It is immediate. You get quick shots immediately. Uganda is a landlocked country. And uh, being landlocked means that we must have partnerships uh, with different service providers, different uh, companies in order to be able to deliver uh, standard or best-in-class services. If you look at the infrastructure, we have to partner with different infrastructure companies in order to be able to deliver service. We have to partner with different content providers in order to deliver service to the users. We have to partner with uh, uh, equipment providers uh, in order to be able to provide the right service. So partnership is not going anywhere. It's going to, uh, uh, it's going to help accelerate the internet penetration and utilization of internet in Uganda. This is purely my opinion. My opinion of the future of internet in Uganda, internet has been on the rise. Uh, and, and it should continue on the rise, but uh, we, we, we live in, uh, in a country uh, where uh, there are not so many um, policies put in place to actually uh, uh, support the internet growth, if you like, because when you have taxes slapped on uh, da uh, things like data, which people shouldn't have that. People shouldn't, I mean, you have education online and, and kids trying to access online to study and people trying to use more and more internet, then you, should, you shouldn't put things like tax on the internet and you shouldn't uh, you know ban things like Facebook you know and say let Facebook get out of, of, of the country and we don't need it and stuff like this so I think that the government needs to do a whole lot more uh, to uh, make uh, to, to further internet usage uh, considering it's becoming a source of livelihood for so many people the young people if you like who are making a living of platforms like Facebook like Instagram and, and selling things of there. their shops over there on the internet, you know, on the social media and stuff like this. So I think uh, we still have a long way to go uh, when, it, when we talk about internet in Uganda and the policies the government needs to put in place uh, to ensure that uh, uh, it helps young people to um, uh, get on this digital road that we talked about and they walk it uh, rather seamlessly, if you ask me. Yeah. If I go back five years back, the data traffic was very less. If, I, if, if you guys remember correctly that even people were not ready to surf, you know, people don't like data or those things. Everybody was on voice call. You know. These days you can see how many people are using WhatsApp calling. Everybody wants to use data calling. So the future is data. Everything is going to move slowly by slowly to data. Everything is going online. Uh, I don't know how many of you are using cloud services. You know, people have started using cloud services. They are, they are not anymore buying a laptop with, let's say, 1 TB of hard disk 
or, or more. They are rather trying to get a small laptop with great features and they buy space in cloud. Google Drive is, is one of the examples. They try to save their data in Google Drive so they can access it from anywhere and it's very easy actually. You know, let's imagine you are going to some place and you want to access your, your documents and you don't have your laptop. But if you have Google Drive, you have your documents are in Google Drive, you can go to the nearby wherever internet is available and you can download, you can see or you can see it at least in your phone. So the future of data is very bright in Uganda and all over the world. On a similar note, Raxio Data Center and the Uganda Internet Exchange Point UIXP signed a deal that saw the Uganda Internet Exchange Point connect directly with the data center customers, making it easier for internet service providers in Uganda to pass internet traffic to each other. We're here today to celebrate the launch of our new expansion into the Raxio Data Center in Namanbe. The UIXP hosts neutral, reliable, high-speed network interconnection infrastructure complete with route servers, content delivery networks, and root DNS services. In the Raxio data center where we've expanded to, our first, uh, the, the first network that's going to connect to our infrastructure is Google. And this is significant because right now networks have to go to Mombasa to connect to Google. Uh, and, and now they'll be able to connect to Google in Uganda through the Uganda Internet Exchange in Raxio. Uh, it means that, uh, the, that Google traffic will get cheaper to deliver for Uganda networks um, because Uganda networks won't have to reach out as far to get it, right? And, and, and so it'll come to them and therefore they can just carry it the last mile to their customers and therefore it's cheaper. It is within this context that Raxio Data Center and the Uganda Internet Exchange Point co-hosted the first peer fest in recognition of the growing peering community. So today we had a peer fest, the first peer fest we've had, and the idea on the peer fest is everyone who connects to an Internet Exchange Point in a country, basically coming together, enjoying a social moment, uh, because normally we're just operating technically, we are connecting each other through cables, wireless but we're not really like actually exchanging views and networking right so it's going to be an annual event that's what we're looking to do um, we want to really leverage the idea of Oktoberfest which happens in October it's a global celebration so yes we're looking at having peers with our peers peers in this case not being just peers in terms of like age mates or work mates but rather people who peer with each other in the internet at some point right so today was the first one it's exciting uh, people responded very well. We've got about 20 peers right now. Uh, we've set a target today that we're going to grow to 100 peers by next year. Uh, so there's a huge amount of work to be done to make sure that the private sector and the public sector also start peering within the same internet system point. Currently, it's been about internet service providers, mobile network operators, cloud service partners, but now we want to kind of widen that spectrum so that enterprises can also peer and share their content. They, Logic about internet exchange points is about keeping local content local. So we don't want to break out the internet to just send content into the country. We'd rather make sure that that is exchanged. We also want to attract a lot of what we call content delivery networks, hashing networks, the big players in the world, the Amazon, the Microsofts, uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, Alibaba, all those big players in the world to bring their equipment into Uganda so that, that content is now local content. The event was attended by internet industry executives, business development managers, peering coordinators, policy makers, regulators, content providers, infrastructure providers, and data center managers, some of whom included Dennis Okiror, Digamba Mehra, and Agri Mogisha. The following were their thoughts about the new partnership between Raxio Data Center and the Uganda Internet Exchange Point. So the Internet Exchange Point improves uh, uh, connectivity uh, for partners or ISPs in terms of cost because if you have an internet exchange point in a data center that means the ISPs or the internet exchange the internet service providers are able to cut down on the cost of traffic that is going upstream uh, the other thing is that the latencies for or for, for, for the internet will re be uh, tremendously reduced which is again uh, good for the experience of the uh, internet users. So that, that's very, very important. Latency, uh, cost, cost uh, benefit. Let me just talk about first about the Rexio. 
I think it's it's a platform which is providing services to all the ISP providers or any 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 media provider who wants to co-locate into that particular place. So now it's it's very easy for people to come to a particular place and join shake hands. You know you don't need to go to Booglobi. Maybe let's say for example Airtel office is in Booglobi, MTN office is in uh, it's near the in, uh, uh, immigration office, like office is in Yusuf Lule. You don't need to go all the three places. Like if those three people want to shake hand, they can shake hand in Rexio itself. It's really easy. It's quick. You can go to Rexio. You you shake hand. You take your services and go away. So it's very easy for business. Then second, I think it's the 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 the, the it's the class. It's a world class data center. I think it's the first world class data center in Uganda. Nobody has those. You know those. Uh, kind of uh, qualities and they have not maintained those those uh, uh, that is standard so this is the world class data center first in uganda that is the biggest biggest benefit because if you go to the data center they are not properly built and they they can they can be a public hazards so this one is at least it's built over a time and it is it has very high standards a world class standard i can say and at the same time it is giving you opportunity to shake hand at a same place so it will it will allow people uh, for example the banks have banks are already started moving to rexio so you know bank bank is a very very important service for anyone uh, you and i we cannot imagine a day without money isn't it everybody needs money so bank has to work like 24 into 7 it's emergency services like telecommunication also so telecommunication service bank services those are those are all uh, emergency services so they have to have uh, what what do you call it a disaster recovery place so this is what the people of telecommunication including bcs and the other people are doing they are setting up their disaster recovery center in rexio so in case we have, God forbid, if we have some, some emergency or some false mosaic uh, events in Uganda, I, 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 I hope it will never happen. But in case it happens, at least internet is working, your banks are working, your emergency services are working. So I think it, it has a great impact on business. Well, again, my opinion, the internet exchange point um, uh, and talking of the UIXP, uh, Raxio, uh, we talk about the internet uh, being here and making life easy for all of us. When uh, UIXP and Raxio come into uh, the market, when they, they get into the game, then they make it even easier for internet usage, you know. Uh, for people like us, uh, your TV channels who stream, uh, who uh, help customers stream, then it, they, they make it even easier in terms of uh, data usage, in terms of uh, 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 data storage, in terms of all this stuff. Because you want to keep a log, you want to keep archives of what exactly that you do on the internet. You can't lose data, you can't lose customers' data. So Raxio, UIXP, they come in to make it absolutely easy. And without them, you can't do anything. So that's my opinion on that. They, they, they come in to make the game much easier for us to play, yeah. Let us also hear from Irene Kagwa Sewangambo, the Acting Executive Director, Uganda Communications Commission. Many years ago, this whole process we are celebrating started on the terrace of Ghana period. And many of you may not know that. So at that time, there was all this talk about we need to keep the internet local, we need to keep content local, we should not use the international bandwidth. Unfortunately, all these years ahead, uh, I'm still defending that argument. So it won't be us to do it, it is all the people who are here. And I think when we all appreciate that the UIXP is not about UIXP or Kyle and, and Michael and, and, the, and Mike and the rest, but all about us, it's when we will actually have that reality that we've all been singing about keeping local content. The PFS has been developed as an annual event to promote awareness, foster collaboration and develop Uganda's peering and interconnection ecosystem. 
Thank you for tuning in to Axio Hour. It has been an absolute pleasure having you. Until next time, have a lovely weekend.